Hello. You remember back in April of last year, um, I did a video briefing to everybody in the force about the MENCAP Stand By Me campaign in all that we do across North Yorkshire Police. That briefing was followed up by a series of videos from members of our community who have disability and who have experienced bullying or inappropriate behaviour and have required the services of North Yorkshire Police. You remember the experience that Di went through when she was bullied um, in, near to a, a telephone box and she had to call for our services. And I think like me, you'll remember how poor that service seemed to be and I hope that stimulated thoughts in your own minds. You record, recall Roy's story. Roy um, sadly passed away um, before we launched that video but his family were absolutely determined that we use the video because of the important messages that it contained. You remember that Roy's story circled around hate crime and the fact that um, sometimes it can be people who are befriending people with disability who are the ones who are committing crimes and are impacting on their lives. You remember Nathan. Nathan, as you look at him, he wasn't obviously a person with disability and that sent us some really important messages. The important message from people with disability that it is okay for us to ask the questions and ask whether they have a disability, ask whether they need more support. And some really important messages in, in all those three videos from us. We then went on to explore some wider issues and how important it is for us to create relationships with people with disability. And you've seen the work that Tom Lister and Jason Lloyd were doing within their communities to better be able to support people with disability. As we go into 2013, I hope that you keep those stories in mind and consider them. They're all still available on the website and able for you to remind yourself why it's really important that we deliver our service in a way that meets the needs at an individual level of each of our communities. At the end of this video, you'll see there's a link at the bottom of the screen and that will enable you to take part in a survey that helps us to understand how effective this form of briefing has been and whether we should continue doing this into the future. So thank you for your support over the last 12 months. Um, I look forward to you continuing to think very carefully about how you deliver your services, to remember that it's really important that we pay particular attention to how we can support people with disability in the community. And by, by building those relationships, people with disability will feel more able to make complaints to the police if they have been bullied or picked on or are victims of crime. Thank you. Anything else? My legs thrown at the front windows. No. Did you report that to the police? Yes. I did. Good. And what happened? Can you remember? I think somebody come up, but they'd, they'd run away up the road. Sure. Right. I've been I've been bullied quite a lot in North Allerton. I've been chased by people in North Allerton. I've been, I've been, I've been to Morrison's got a newspaper, and, and close police officer, I put me, got paper at Morrison's, helped me put me bag in the jumper. It was crazy, me to get me to arrest, can I get, don't come here, get arrest you, they said, they said, they said, you know, I felt like a uniform police officer, and I felt like an outside Morrison, follow me to Casco's. He followed you? Yeah. Mark had purchased a newspaper on from me. Morrison's. I mean, bought it and he paid for it. Yeah. And he always puts it inside his zipper jacket. 
And he walked, and he was followed down the high street by this officer. We're not sure if it's a security officer right, or right. a police officer, but the experience. In clothes, was, in clothes. Said, so "Come here, I'm going to arrest you." Says. It sounds like that's a security guard. Got hold of you at um, Tesco's, didn't you, Mark? Yes. Really upset, Mark. It was on the day we launched the right. Um, right. safe places, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's that and that was the uh, with Mitch. I was all right. Yeah. Did yeah, but when I was a teacher for Ron Mary, I got on the windows smashed and I was putting it to the place and then it seemed to do anything about it. And I, I paid my cousin under an hour quid come and put cameras up because of the plate that you know, they wanted. They said they couldn't do it you know, they've got evidence. Even the neighbour upstairs seen them do it. And uh, paid my cousin money to come and put these cameras up. We well, took wrong, but we got pins. Uh, Being bullied at school. Being bullied at school? Yeah. Is that what happened to you, was it? Yes, yeah. What, what school was that? Uh, Mowbray School in Beedale. Oh, Beedale, yeah. And I, know, then I left when I was about 16 and then I got bullied at college. What college did you go to? Wheelsby at Grimsby and it made me feel sad, frightened and scared. When they put a, brick th a bottle through my window, my, my bedroom window, and my partner at the time said, um, go and ring the police. So I went to ring the police. And I got from the police, oh no, not you again. The youth were banging out at my door and they tried to break in, but it was a solid door, I couldn't get it, get in. And I run the place. It took that was at what uh, at all past seven. It took them to ten o'clock to get to me. You told me about an incident which happened next door. Bullying. Bullying, yeah. So what happened there? I don't know. Okay. Do you want me to, do you want yeah. me to say about it? Yeah. Okay. There's a, there were some teenagers in town who were calling you rude names. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And what did that make you feel like? Not very good. Not very good? No. Okay. Has it had an impact on your life? No, no, no. It hasn't had an impact? No, it has not. not. Didn't you say to me that it had something to do with you not wanting to go into town? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's made your life a little bit less pleasant. Yeah, it did. It, it, it has. Okay. Did you ever tell the police about this before? No. No. Why didn't you tell the police about it? No. Is it because you were nervous? Yeah, I was nervous. You were nervous? I was nervous, yeah, I was nervous. Please. These teenagers wear, wear hoodie tops calling me names. What were they calling you? Donkey. Right. And what exactly happened then? What did you do? Just didn't try to ignore them. Yeah, somebody moved in to my house once and they would go. I asked them to go in the wish room and they used to smoke uh, smoke ropes. I asked him to go and went back. And at the time, when we was me, come in, so I run away. And I then I got somebody in, and not that, it was having their music on. And I was going complaint from the neighbours, because mm. it was on the hours in the morning. And you know, I just said to him, Look, you've got to go, because I've got complaint from the neighbours about you having me. Music come. That I just could. Where else you live now, right? I live with my sister in town. Mm. Uh, Do you feel safer there? Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, of course, I could like coming. I don't go out much now because I'm too proud to go out. Mm. Uh, in case you ask me for money, I'll get back in the house.
Have you ever been a victim of disability hate crime? Yes. Um, I've been talking with people with uh, asking me for money and, and uh, when I would get them, they used to uh, call me names of did this happen more than once to you? Yeah, it's always happening. And I can just be saying, um, don't go into town much because it's always happening. Mm. You know, them stopping me from money and you know, things like that. Because I won't get them. You know. Do you think you're being targeted by people? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm disabled, with a disability, mm. the thing can just take the makeup on me. Mm. Have you ever had an occasion where you, you've given money to somebody? Yes, um, like I've just been talking in there. I used to go out with this girl and she was just using me for my money. And, yeah, uh, and that, yeah. She was just using me for my money. Mm. Um, so what happened when she took your money? Did you have any money to live on? No. I used to have great talks with my community nurse and they used to go to the Rainbow Centre mm. and yeah, get my food and things like that. Yeah. And I was going down the eating and yeah, and I'd just come out of hospital with pneumonia because um, I was very cold at the time because she had me all my money I couldn't afford the gas and, mm. and things like that. Have you had any experience with the police what went to your liking? Yeah, they had been all right but yeah, same mouthful, same mouthful and that point, yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, I would like to make doing about this girl, I just fell out of because she was still bringing me, texting me, and, uh, and threatening me on my phone. Mm. They won't leave me alone. And send me an invoice and he keeps. Yeah. When the police have dealt you with you, do you feel yeah. as though we've dealt with you, with you correctly? Yeah, yeah. Have, have we. Um, Respected your disability. Yeah, yeah. Because mm. if I'm interviewed for anything wrong, or a video, uh, if I have to make a video, I can just tell you about that uh, lady. I have to have a, another with me. Mm. Uh. I mean, I mean, this girl, I'll just tell you who's had me to come and win it. She was now, now that I'm safe from. And she told me, I'll go out the way down where she lives, down by her flat. She's going to find the place and have me arrested. Now, why can't I walk down that, that, down that street to go to the sea front when I'm doing nothing? Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's why I don't go in town much. Mm. I mean, I've got two friends I go to church with. They own a cat down there. They wonder why I ain't been to see them. Because she told me if I go anywhere near that boat, she's going to get me arrested. So you feel as though you've been victimised by her? Yeah. And you can't go about your normal life? No. Mm. No. No. We need to get that sorted then, don't we? Yeah. Yeah.
thing is, people with learning disabilities, um, are frightened of the police because of what I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And because they deal with people that are going to be arrested, so sometimes they think they're going to be arrested. I think people with learning disabilities need to know people. So I think if you went to visit places like day centres and homes, yeah. and give them talks about safety on the streets and things, yeah. And they was allowed to ask you questions there. That that would encourage them yeah. to speak to just you in the calm. streets. Yeah, I suppose if it's in your environment and you're in a more comfortable environment, then you're more likely to open up a bit more. Yeah. And let us know how we can help. And you. then of course we do have to think of those who are less able and aren't verbal. Yeah. And people with high support needs and not Asperger's and autism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Communication for them is very, very difficult. Now, if they were getting abused or hate crime done to them, how would you find, ever find out? Yeah, that would be a lot more difficult. So maybe it'd be a good idea for the police as well if we had more training. Yeah, and, and if support. you actually went into the homes and houses and, see and how, talked to people. And see how they live their lives and, and what they do. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Various special measures that the police can take if the person says I've got a learning disability mm -hmm. or if the police can tell which isn't always the case. Yeah. Um, but even if a policeman suspects that somebody's got a learning disability, they should get an appropriate adult in. Yeah. Or someone mm -hmm. inform them. Yeah. Whether that be a family or a carer. Family carer, advocate, mm -hmm. social worker, care manager, I mean, whatever you want to yeah, call them. Yeah, so you'd feel a lot more comfortable than you would have done speaking to the police and dealing with something if you had someone next to you support you as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you, what, you'd feel you'd get taken more seriously or you just feel more relaxed knowing that there's someone there to support you? Um... I think it would be easy actually knowing there's somebody there by my side and on my side. Yeah, so you don't feel as though you're alone and fighting yeah. against the police as opposed to working with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's like somebody to back me up really, so look, she's telling the truth and things like that because I feel like the police don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Well, I work in Harrogate anyway, as I said, Di, so maybe we could arrange to come in and do a talk. On safety and our role. It's my house. Yeah. Lovely, yes. Happy with that? I would be very happy with that. Thank yeah, you very well, much. we'll be finishing here. We'll be back in the room. We'll organise a day. Right, thank you. Deal? Yeah. Deal. Shake on it. Done. <laughs>
our approach to people who are missing from home, and how we support those who are mentally unwell within our community. But of course, there are always areas where we can improve. And over recent months, I've been doing some work with police staff and officers from across the county to better understand and examine our approach to supporting people with disability, specifically those who are victims of disability hate crime. Now very recently the Equalities and Human Rights Commission have undertaken an extensive piece of work to better understand the impact of disability hate crime across the country. It would be no surprise for you to know that there's, this has reaffirmed that disability hate crime is a real problem and that it is something that we should focus on in supporting people in North Yorkshire and the City of York. You will also be aware that very recently the organisation signed up to the MENCAP promises under the Stand By Me campaign. Now did we need this work and the MENCAP promises to help focus our minds and to understand the scale of the problem? Well we shouldn't have done and I am sure like me you will remember the very tragic case of Fiona Pilkington and her disabled daughter back in October 2007. The key points from this case were that partners failed to recognise that she and her daughter were repeat victims of hate crime. She called for help over 30 times from the local police over a 10 year period. Over the next few months we are doing, going to be doing some work with a range of disabled people from our communities. They are going to enable us to better understand the impact of disability hate crime, what it does to them and how it impacts on their families. And the key thing from, that, from this work will that it will give us some simple advice that will enable us to improve the quality of our service to the community. The work with the communities will lead to the production of some short, brief video messages to help us improve the service we deliver. And while we are awaiting the development of the videos, there are some very simple things that you can do now that will enable us to really make a difference. So call handling. It is really essential that you're not afraid to ask, why has this happened to you? Has this happened before? Asking whether the person needs additional support and if you believe they're a victim of hate crime, please make sure you tell the officers and PCSOs that information before they attend. Officers and PCSOs, when you're engaging with victims, consider their surroundings. Consider how they're communicating with you. Does it appear to you that they may need additional support? Does it appear to you that they may have a disability and that could be the reason why they have become a victim of crime? Please be aware that people with a disability may need extra support to give witness statements. They need much more time. They may need an intermediary to help them engage with us, such as a family friend or someone from one of the support agencies that work with them. And of course, as with all victims of crime, it is absolutely essential that you keep them up to date with how you are progressing the inquiries into the incident that they've brought to our attention and that you signpost them wherever possible to support agencies if they are available to help the young person or the victim. Those of you who work in our safer neighbourhoods, I want you to think about your engagement plans, the way that you meet with your communities at the moment. Does this give people with a disability the option and the opportunity to engage with you? If they don't, how can you adapt them? How can you change them to really give people with disability a voice to help us shape our service. And finally, I would just like to reiterate the absolute critical importance of you keeping records. It is essential that if we have victims of hate crime and disability hate crime in our communities, that we record those details accurately so that we can ensure that we give the best service we can to repeat victims. So, in closing, I want you to really remember the Stand By Me promises. There are 10 simple promises that enable us to deliver a better service to all in our communities, not just those with disability. I know that you, like me, will want to deliver the best possible service that we can for everybody we serve. And with your continued support, we can fight to make sure that people with disabilities are safe from hate crime. You will recall that we, working with our communities, set a number of clear service standards. You will be able to see the clear links between the Stand By Me promises and our commitment through the service standards to our communities. 
Working to fulfil both is totally achievable because they are so complementary. So please do not see these as separate areas of focus. Thank you. When I was um, in shopping in Morrison's in Ripon, yeah, and the youth was following me and putting dog food in my trolley and saying, "Hey, you should be eating this," and yeah. taking other type of tins like tins of spaghetti and tins of soup and stuff out, yeah, and putting them back on the shelves. Yeah, how did that make you feel then? Get very quite, upset. Quite I was getting upset. quite frustrated as well. Yeah, though. so you're not only upset, but you're quite angry as well. Yeah. How did you react to them? Well, I tried to grab them, and I'm glad I didn't really, because I don't think I'd have stopped until they'd have dropped if, Yeah. You know, because. But it's a good job that you didn't react, because obviously that might put yourself in danger as well. Anyway, I went into the phone box. Yeah. Outside of Morrison's and the marketplace. And. I rang the police and they all crowded round me and they blocked me in with um, a bench. They went to the bench against the telephone door on the floor so I couldn't get out. And I told this to the police and I said, you sound very angry. I said, you'd be flipping angry if you'd had all this done to you. Yeah. And, and I said, We'll send someone out. And when they come, we told them to skedaddle. If so they go on skedaddle before I let her out, because she's in a bad mood. And she gets you, she'll give you a clip, you'll know about it. And I was so angry that they told them to go, but they hadn't told them off or anything. Mm. But I swore at the copper when he, when he did let me out. Yeah. So you didn't feel that you got a very good service from the police then? No. No, not at all. Did you, did you feel they didn't take you seriously? I thought, I thought it was a bit of fun. Yeah. I thought it was just kids messing about. Yeah. So it didn't really... But it was my life. Yeah. You know, I'm originally impaired. I just could have so easy of given my husband a tin of dog food, cut my husband a tin of dog food without realising it. Yeah. Yeah, and if this incident happened again in the future, how do you think you'd want the police to deal with it? What would you want us to do differently in order well, to help you? first and foremost, I would be wanted to be treated with dignity and respect. Yeah. Which you deserve as everyone else does. Yes. Yeah. That's something most people get, apart from people with learning disabilities. So you feel that you were let down by the police because they didn't treat you with any dignity or respect? Yes. Yeah. How would you want the police, if the incident happened again, how would you want the police to deal with the group of youths? I would want them to at least tell them off and tell yeah. them not to do it again. Yeah. And mm. say it's not funny, it's not a joke. Mm. Just take it a bit more seriously, you thought. Yeah. The reason why we're doing this today is for you to tell us how we can help you better. Um, we spoke about next door about the fact that you're dressed in a very smart suit there. And for me, if I first came and saw you, I wouldn't know that you had a disability. What I want to know is, to start with, if I came and spoke to you, would you be offended if I said to you, do you have a disability? How would you feel about that? I won't be defended. You wouldn't be offended? No. Okay. Would you tell me straight away if 
if I came to speak to you that you had a disability? You would? Yeah. Okay. How would you tell me that? I would explain uh, my problem and where I live to help. I would be uh, responsible in that way. Are there things we could do to help you? Some people don't listen to me when I've got in Important things to say, and like yourself, as you said, you're here to help. I would like that more often in Scotland as well, for people who might need help. 